Hello, well here we are at last, it's Christmas Eve 2016. Welcome along to today's United Kingdom talk. I'm, I'm actually recording this quite early, it's about 20 past two in the morning. I've just got in from my uh, karaoke night at a central station, which was very nice. It was a little bit quieter tonight. And uh, quite frankly, I wasn't surprised because the roads, the roads were so quiet. You know those that journey that's been taking me two hours? Last night, it took me an hour and 20 minutes. How fantastic is that? You know, if only they weren't all like that. Please, please, oh Lord, give me a journey that's just an hour and 20 minutes. Yes, that's what we say. So we had a nice night um, uh, last night and a nice lot of people singing. Of course, there was, as always, uh, a girl at the end who, who arrived at about half past 11. And then said, uh, oh, the manager said I could sing another song. I said, well, we're, we're full up now. I'm for, oh, but the manager said, the manager, the manager, the manager, the manager, manager. Doesn't make any difference to you. There's a queue. Join the queue the same as everyone else. And we're full up now. You can't walk in. At, we've been going since our past eight. You walk in at our past 11 and demand to sing. And of course, you know, they, I, I often wonder so much, is it actually about them wanting to sing? Or is it like a bit of a thing where... They're just trying to get their own way. I do wonder. And um, she went on and on, and then it's coming up. What time do you finish at 12 o'clock? We've got another three minutes yet. And I am told there I must finish at midnight. I have to finish there, bang on midnight, because we have a little bit of a problem with sound going over to some of the houses that are close by. You have to stop it. And they don't, act, they don't, I don't know what part of it they don't understand. You're too late. Sorry, that's it. You know, if I was a plane waiting to take you to Ibiza, would you have turned up five minutes before it's due to go? No, you wouldn't. Same thing, dear. The plane has gone. And so have the karaoke host. Bye-bye. All right. Um... I've got all my presents downstairs waiting to take to the children. Uh, when I say children, you know, old children, uh, like my nephew and niece. And the, the, the younger nephew isn't too old yet. He's still 19, so he's still young. But the other ones are old now. I think I think my, my niece is a little bit worried because this year is her 30th birthday. I can't believe I've got a niece who's 30. Wow. Well, but to me, she's still that eye. You know, I see her with her children and she's like one of those children. Isn't it weird? And of course, I've got all the others. I've got, I've got stacks of presents. I cannot wait to see little faces as I am, as they open them on Christmas Day. So I'm really looking forward to that, really. Am. Uh, lots of lovely people, uh, viewers and indeed friends who come along to uh, karaoke or quiz nights have given me little gifts and I've got them all I shall have them all in the car and I shall take them up north with me and open them on our little Christmas day show which I'll um, uh, which I'll do tomorrow okay so I'll do all that on the on the screen for you I hope you've put a label on there I fortunately Adam the plumber gave me a little present today and he, he hadn't put my name his name on it I said you better put your name on that because it'll get lost well, it won't get lost, but I'll open it. And, uh, oh, who's that for? Do you ever do that? You know, when you're all around the Christmas tree and you've got all these, and then you get one something, and it says maybe to Chris, but who's it from? Don't know who it's from. A mysterious person. Very strange and mysterious person. Yes, probably sent that through. Mm. As you can hear, the voice isn't quite too good, but it's okay. Um, I've got this, like, chesty cough. I, I, it's been hanging around there for about three weeks, but it's. I don't think it's getting any worse. Sometimes I think it is, but then it's not. As you can hear, I'm not coughing now. I don't want to breathe. Like, that's all right. I'm not really asthmatic or anything like that. So I've got my fingers crossed that it will sort itself out. I really don't like to take antibiotics unless... You know, the doctor absolutely tells you to. You know what I mean? Uh, thank you very much to Johnny Key. A tourist have taken this picture. And it's very clever, actually. A tourist has captured a beachside photo bearing a striking resemblance to the outline of Australia. Uh, Kelly Matthews, this was on the BBC News website, took the sunset image looking between branches and leaves on Darwin es Esplanade in Northern Territory, which is in indeed in Australia. So have a look at this. You know the Australian map. Look at that. Isn't that, sp isn't that spooky? Isn't that spookily like the actual shape of Australia when you look on maps and things like that? Here's the actual map there. Look, very, very similar. Isn't that clever? Take a fellow to do it. So 
Here is your homework while you've got holidays or something like that going on. Your homework is, okay, to take a picture of like that, but in the shape of my face. Now, I, I'm now going to give you a side view and you will be surprised. You will be surprised at how large my nose actually is. Can you see that? There we are. Look at this. Big old nose that is, isn't it? Eh? Don't you think? Don't you think? It's a, bit, it's a bit barry, isn't it? It's a bit of a barry nose. People with long noses are nice people, I guarantee you. So there's your homework. See if you can get a picture. Take a picture of like a, I don't know, some sort of nature thing. And it's got to be in that shape. Can you do that? Send it in. Email address chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. I've got to say, just before I came up to chat to you, I've just got in from work and uh, I had to clear up after the, the cat's getting really messy. Bless her up. She's old now. And um, I, I, I can't work it out. She wheezes and number twos in the cat tray usually. But some, and she always wheezes in the cat tray. But sometimes she does number two and it's somewhere on the kitchen floor and you only have to find it. Tonight, tonight it was under the table and particularly messy. And I have to keep coming in. It's usually night time. I come in from work. And and as soon as you open the door, oh, you know, you get that smell. And oh, she's gone again. And then you look over, hoping, look over, hoping that the cat tray is full. But not tonight, no. And I, I, I would say she's not using the cat tray more than half the time now. Uh, last time I asked the vet about this, he, she said, put another cat tray down. So I did, and she did just didn't use that one at all. Um, so tonight it was under the table, so you've got to pick it up, and then, you know, it's dried a bit onto the floor. And I've got, I've got, um, uh, what are they called? I've got tiles, but they're like slate tiles. They're slate tiles, so they've got grooves in them, you see, and the, and the, and it gets into, the, oh dear. And, it goes, and you've got to, then you've got to, it's, of course it's dried on, so you pick up the yard bits and the other bits, you know, you kind of, and then you you wipe it across the floor. You make it even worse. And I put this um, Dettol, you know, spray stuff on it. Leave it for a while. Wipe the best up, and then I get the mop out and I mop it a few times, and it's done. It's no trouble really, but she's getting quite messy now. But it's what just the way it is, isn't it? She's also got these little growths, bless her heart, and um, I think they're getting a bit bigger. Last time I saw the bit about those, he said there was nothing he could do, just to, you know. Look after the best you can. So I shall do. Don't worry about that. I know there's some people, you know, the mess gets a little bit too much. Don't worry. It won't get too much from me. I'll just, just get on with it. And uh, it doesn't take that long, mate. 15 minutes, you know, to clear up the kitchen. Anyway, after I did that, I thought I deserved a cup of tea. But unfortunately, I've got a blooming great big bag of crisps downstairs. And I hadn't eaten four chocolates from my um, uh, Galaxy Advent calendar that Ronnie Zavrav and he bought me a little while back. So I had those as well. And, I, I, you know, just before bed, how stupid is that? I, you know the great big uh, bags of Walker's Sensations? Very strong flavours. I think cheddar cheese and wild onion or something like that. A black, black packet they are. And I've had about three quarters of one of those just before bed. How stupid is that? I've got to say. Oh, talking about food. Um... Do you remember I said to you the doctor has now given me some anti-acid tablets? I can't remember. They're downstairs. I can't remember what they're called. But you're supposed to have one every morning. And that stops reflux. So I hadn't had any until yesterday. And I thought, right, I'm going to try this out. Now, one of the foods that gives me um, acid reflux is, is, is arabata sauce. It's a very spicy sauce that you put over... Uh, spaghetti, which you get from Waitrose. So I had one of these tablets yesterday. I waited half an hour, because supposed to have it between half an hour and an hour before food. And then I had it, and then I went to work. And I, I, I was aware that it was, it was, you know, a little bit of a problem. But actually, as the night wore on, it got better and better. And when I went to bed, no acid. Today, no acid, none at all. So that's a blooming good thing, isn't it? Eh? There's a little bit of good news. The other thing which... Um, if you're a regular viewer, you'll know about this. I've had a lot of tummy problems this year, okay? I went to the doctor a couple of weeks ago, and um, he's, uh, I, I had a little investigation, and they gave me some pills. Uh, I won't say which ones, but anyway, 
three days of pills and it started getting better. And actually, it's not bad at all now. And so I'm hoping that that was the cause and it's sorted now. Fingers crossed. Fingers, I had a bit of an infection up there. And I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that that's all sorted now. So that's like a Christmas present, isn't it? Christmas present. Things are starting to work. All I've got to do now is get rid of the cough. Yes, I think so. I was watching a program on telly while I was stuffing my face with those crisps and chocolates. Have you ever seen it? N uh, Nightmare Neighbours. Have you seen that? <gasps> Dreadful people, dear. Awful. Have you seen the people on there? It, it frightens me that these people actually exist. I mean, I don't know of any round here. Maybe we have a few round here. I don't know. I really don't know. But you watch it, there must be awful, awful, sitting or living next to someone who's a nightmare neighbour, you know, bang, bang, bang with the noise all the time or shouting at each other. The one I was watching earlier, the, the neighbours appeared, the only way they communicated, that, so she's sitting in, this woman's sitting in one house, and she's in her living room, listening to her neighbours row. But she said, this seems to be the way they just communicate with each other, just screaming and shouting at each other all the time. I mean, what's that about? <laughs> I mean, that, that was pretty mild compared to some of the others. There's a lot of parking issues. Actually, we have some parking issues around here at the moment. Just up the road, there's there's like a, a bit of road where you come round and people keep parking one that side and it's really difficult. There's no way a fire engine would get through. As people are so stupid that they park like that. Of course, their argument would be, well, where are we supposed to park? Well, can't you put two wheels on the on the pavement? Is that allowed? I don't know if that's allowed or not. But if you did, you know, it would be so much easier. And often I've come around that corner and I've literally had to reverse sort of, it's like a T-junction. And I've literally had to reverse that way so I can straighten up to get through the gap. Ridiculous. But if you've got nightmare neighbours, my, my heart, but perhaps you'll tell me about it. Put a little message down there or send us an email about your nightmare neighbours. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk is my email address. I'd love to hear about you. Uh, fortunately, uh, throughout my entire life, we've never had nightmare neighbours. Not when it was with my mum and dad in Roehampton or Peckham or when I was in Wandsworth or here. I've always had I've always had very, very good neighbours. Very lucky. Indeed, the four of us who live with well, there's four houses next to each other here. One, two, three, four. And none of us have ever had a problem with anyone else. And I do worry that at some point, oh, it might be me. I don't know. I might move out. You know, or one of us might move out. You never know who's going to get in there. Because, of course, we've all grown up now. There's no children. Not that little children can be that much of a problem. If they're, if they're you know, controlled properly, if they're looked after properly, then they're not going to be a problem. But um, none of us have children. Or there's, there's one child, I think, that, but he's like 22 or something like that. He's at university now. So we're very, very, very lucky to all get on and all be good neighbours here. And it is a worry if someone's about to move out. And I remember years ago, I considered moving to a bigger house. I don't know why. It just, just was in my mind. And um, I, I, I said to Dave, my neighbour, I did say to him, actually, oh, I was going to move out at one point and buy a bigger house, but I've decided not to. And he said, oh, I'm very pleased to hear that, Chris, because you never know who's going to move in here. It might, it might be a nightmare neighbour. Oh, God help them. If it's anyone who's been on one of those programmes. Actually, even the people, even the people who are complaining about the nightmare neighbours you wouldn't want living next to you, they're just awful, awful people. Anyway, there we are. That's uh, nightmare neighbours. was packed at the hairdressers this morning, or yesterday morning. God, it's absolutely packed in there. But we've had our hair nicely trimmed. You don't even know if there's any difference, will you? You may, eh? Ronnie, my mate, he had his, he shaved his beard off the other day. And I tell you, it took 10, 10 years off his age, right? But he's going to grow it back again. He said he doesn't like it. Isn't that mad? Why would you want to look even older than you look now? God's sake, I'm desperate here. Desperate. Look, can you see that? I've got a little spot come up on there as well. I squeezed it today. Isn't that, oh, isn't that horrible? Squeeze it. Not, not, for, not for this program, spot squeezing. Uh, let's do a couple of messages from yesterday's show. Hello to Tony Power, who saw the uh, show yesterday and said, Chris, you need to concentrate on your driving. I wasn't driving. Watch the show properly, dear. I wasn't the one driving. That was Ronnie driving. I was the one holding the camera. 
wouldn't drive an older camera. How can you drive an older camera? Oh, unless, of course, you're an Uber driver. They can drive. They can hold a camera. They can have a cigarette. They can operate their blooming mobile phones. God's sake, the sooner, I tell you what, once those Uber drivers, the sooner they all lose their jobs to automatic cars, the better. Because London is absolutely clogged up with bloody Uber drivers who have no idea where they're going or anything like that. Merry Christmas. Hope you all lose your job soon and are replaced by automatic cars, which will do a hell of a lot better the job than you lot. Um, and uh, Tony also says, uh, people keep nagging me to write Christmas songs, to write a Christmas song, because Tony writes songs, OK? So, Chris, I thought I would send you the lyrics for you to read this out. Merry Christmas, everyone. So here's the lyrics. See what you think. I don't know if we can... Uh, do you want me to put, try and put this to a tune or not, Tony? I don't know. Trolleys crashing in the aisles, people showing their true colours, their emotions running high... Tempers raising in the kitchens, relatives must grin, and bear screaming children jumping all around me. No, that's not going to work, is it? I'll just read it. I'll read it like a poem. Oh, no, not poetry. Oh, my God, I always swore I'd never do poetry on this. I'll have to read it like a poem, OK? So here's the lyrics to the song that is wrote. Trolleys crashing in the aisles. Uh, oh, no, wait, I've missed a line. I've missed the top line, dear. It's the season of compassion. Trolleys crashing in the aisles, people showing their true colours, their emotions running high, tempers raising in the kitchens, relatives must grin and bear, screaming children jumping all around me. Merry Christmas, everyone. It's going to be a nightmare tonight. I'm going to get electrocuted by the Christmas lights so bright. Queen is talking. They're all sleeping. Christmas pudding everywhere. Toilets flushing. Cats meowing. Dogs are barking like the wife, but it's a season of love and understanding. It's just one day, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for that, Tony. Let us know when you put a tune to that. Perhaps I could sing it for you. Could I Could I make a little record for you? Do you think I've got the voice? Not at the moment, but you've heard me sing a couple of times. Do you think I could perhaps put a little track out there? Do you think I could make a little track? Perhaps I could be the UK's entry for the Eurovision Song Contest. Perhaps I could do that. Let me know if you want me, Tony. No charge. Special friends. No charge for you, OK? Thank you. Um, John Child wants to know what the other sheet of music on my on my uh, uh, keyboard was. Is it the score of United Kingdom Talk, Chris Reardon, the musical? Sadly not. There is no Chris Reardon, the musical, John. But if you are that way talented, perhaps you should write a musical. Eh? A musical about my sad, lonely, pathetic life. I like the sound of that, lovey. I think you should get pen to paper. Thank you, John. And you disappeared. You came to the karaoke tonight and disappeared. You and Foxy, where the hell did you go? You only put one song in. Where did you disappear to? You're usually there all night. Very disappointed you didn't come and say goodbye. Where on earth did you go? Let me know, please. Hello to Kiki D saying, uh, your show is greatly appreciated, Chris. A ray of sunshine in midwinter. Oh, how nice. Tell poor Ronnie we love him too. I will do, Kiki D. Always love to hear from you, my darling. All right. Um, it's birthday time, boys and girls. And then I think I'm, what am I doing today? I think I'm singing you a tune rather than do it on the organ. And the reason is, uh, <coughs> excuse me, my um, uh, downstairs, I usually go downstairs, well, I have been going downstairs to play uh, on the organ, as you well know, my, um, uh, the Daily Christmas Carol. But it is like three o'clock in the morning and I don't know if they can hear that. Well, they might well hear hear the organ at night time through the walls. I mean, they're quite I never hear my neighbours. and I don't, I, They don't ever hear me. But consideration, I don't really want to, you know, risk waking them up by playing the organ because it is quite loud. Um, so I'm going to sing you one today. I'm just uh, where is it? Uh, if it's on there, there it is. There it is. So I'll, I'll sing it here in the Mirrorball. Well, no Mirrorball at the moment. We've got that turning. The Mirrorball will be making a return. I don't know. Would you like the Mirrorball back, right? Or would you like a globe? I'm kind of considering a globe. But I can't find one that I like. I know that sounds a bit mad. I can't find a globe that I like. Would you like a globe turning there? Or would you like the Mirrorball? Oh, I haven't got my light on. Look. We've got to have that on tonight, being as it's Christmas Eve as well, haven't we? That's better. 
we are illuminated. Would you like a globe or the mirrorball back? Please let me know, okay? Uh, only one birthday today. You get all my attention tonight. Charlotte Rose Smith, a lovely young, young, young lady um, who's very successful. She was running the bar in Ministry of Sound for some time. I can't remember what she's doing now, but she's lovely. 27 years old tonight. Happy birthday, Charlotte, darling. Here's your song, all right? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Charlotte. Happy birthday to you. Fancy that. Only one person's birthday on Christmas Eve, the lovely Charlotte. All right. Happy birthday, darling. Now, <clears throat> I don't know how I'm going to sing this, actually, now that I've thought about it, because I'm, I, I can't quite get to notes at the moment. Let's have a go. I shall try and sing you a little Christmas carol tonight. Here we go. Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come ye, oh, come ye to bear Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the king of angels. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. Now, I'm afraid you're only getting the one verse, my darlings. I cannot sing at the moment. I can't, I can't sing normally, come to that, when you think about it. I really can't sing at the moment, as you can hear. Uh, can't get to those high notes, I'm afraid. But never mind, never mind. So, uh, Christmas Eve. Enjoy your Christmas Eve, whatever you're doing. Perhaps some of you are getting last minute shopping. Oh dear, rather you than me. 24th, look at that, 24th of December 2016. Another year almost over. Uh, hopefully I'll see you tomorrow for a little Christmas Day show. Apart from that, enjoy your Christmas Eve. I'm shortly, a little bit later on, going to start driving up to my sister's house and uh, Ronnie and his other half are moving into my house for a few days to look after my cat and my house, all right? See you soon. Thanks for watching and listening. And uh, happy Christmas. Cheerio.